Happy New Year to those of you who I haven't had a chance to say that to. And um, without any further ado, um, we'll mute everybody except Gordon, obviously. Um, and um, it'll be over to you, Gordon. And it's lovely to have you with us. So just give me one second just to mute everybody. Um, and um, unmute you, obviously. Two seconds. There we go. All good. That's it. That's you. We're good to go. Thanks, Gordon. Over to you. And thanks again for coming. It's lovely to see you. Well, but not at all, Heather. It's a real pleasure to be here, I have to say. And as I as I look around the screen, I see so many Wheel Kent faces that it, uh, it, it, it's a real joy. Um, I have to say, even after only three months into the job, there's a, a certain surreal quality uh, about the fact that I'm joining you this evening as the president nominee of Rotary International. Who'd have believed that that day could ever dawn? I, I don't know if any of you remember a film from a few years back. It starred Robbie Coltrane, much better known, of course, as Hagrid from the Harry Potter films. But Robbie Coltrane was a priest in a small village in the north of Italy. And by some slip of a pen in a papal conclave in Rome, he was made Pope. Well, I have to say, over the last few weeks, in the wee small hours of the morning, I've often wondered if a similar slip of the pen might have taken place in Evanston, the nominating committee for RI president last August. And I keep waiting on that second phone call from the chair of that committee to say that some terrible mistake had been making. Fortunately, despite the error, Robbie Coltrane made a half-decent job of being Pope. So there was a happy ending to the film. I just hope there's a similar happy ending for me on the 30th of June, 2024. As I already said, it's a real privilege to be part of your meeting this evening, even although it's on a virtual basis, and even although I would rather have been in a room with each and every one of you, but of course, I guess it's because it is on a virtual basis that has made this call possible with so many people here from so many different locations. Uh, and it really is good to see you all. And if I can echo Heather's comments of a few moments ago and wish you all a very happy new year if it's not too late to be doing that on the 11th of January. I have to say, having Zoomed all around the world over the last few months, it's really nice to be home in Scotland tonight. One of the few occasions I've been asked to speak to a relatively local audience. What is it they say about you're never a prophet in your own land? And when Heather first asked me to join you this evening, it was suggested I talk about my vision for Rotary. And of course, I'm only too happy to do exactly that. But at this stage, I would apologize to any of you who may have been following me around on a virtual basis and have heard me speak to my vision for Rotary before. Because, surprise, surprise, my vision for Rotary doesn't change from month to month or from meeting to meeting. So a lot of what you might hear over the next few minutes, you may just have heard before. But in truth, my vision for Rotary is relatively simple in that I want to see us grow, continue to change, to innovate, to transform, and above all, to improve, to reflect the times that we're living in, and also, in doing so, to better serve the needs of those who both desire and deserve our help, especially at this critical time, as we navigate through and hopefully out of the current global pandemic. But make no mistake, we are still in the grip of this pandemic, especially with such inequitable vaccination rates across the whole world, coupled with the reports coming out of France only last week of yet another mutation and all the implications that that brings. I don't think there can be any argument. We live in challenging times. And I hope you don't think I'm exaggerating when I say things might never be the same again. But that, you know, need not be a bad thing. I'm a great believer 
in looking for the positives in any negative. And there are a great many positives coming out of the current challenging and what some might describe as negative situation. Positives like the opportunity for us to take stock and reevaluate our priorities in life and in the society in which we live. Positives like the opportunity for us to take stock and reevaluate the way we operate in Rotary at every level, from club through district to Rotary Britain and Ireland to the zones and on to Rotary International. The phrase build back better has been used a great deal during the coronavirus pandemic to describe how things might look in a post-pandemic world. In fact, I think next to you're on mute, it's probably one of the most commonly used phrases over the past couple of years. But as far as Rotary is concerned, it shouldn't be a question of building back better, but rather of building forward better. Building back implies returning to the way things were. But for me, that is not an option, as we need to learn from our collective experiences over the last two years and take Rotary forward into what people are calling the new normal. It would be a tragedy if we don't learn from the last 24 months. A tragedy and a travesty. We all need to seize the opportunity to take Rotary forward, but we need to do it now before the opportunity passes. We're changing faster than ever at the moment in terms of embracing new technology and embracing new ways of thinking. And I think we've probably seen the sort of changes that would have taken place anyway over the next five to 10 years happen within the last two years. This pandemic has given us a unique opportunity to draw a line in the sand and review our entire method of operating. And I believe that as we come through it, there's much to be learned as regards our future. Some of the most exciting things about Rotary just now are the opportunities that come as far as the way we operate at club level, which after all is the bedrock of Rotary. We now have so much more flexibility and I want to encourage the use of that flexibility to allow existing clubs to operate in a way that suits their current and future members now and in the future, as well as the establishing of new styles of Rotary Club. I believe we have a one-off opportunity just now to engage with those who during the pandemic have embraced the concept of voluntary service and have them join us to allow them continue giving service. Because if clubs are our bedrock, then membership is our lifeblood. We really are so fortunate that there is so much opportunity to embrace new club models at the moment that don't need to be bound by style of meeting or by geography or by suitability of a venue. These new club models allow us to engage with a different audience. An audience that maybe doesn't want to meet every single week. An audience that maybe doesn't want to have a meal. An audience that maybe doesn't want to meet face to face at all, but would rather meet in a manner that suits them. An audience that wants to do things rather than just meet for the sake of meeting. And that audience needn't just be the young. I sometimes think we put rather too much store on attracting just young members at the moment. There are many others who might be a little bit older, but who would be interested in joining the right kind of Rotary Club for them. And so my vision for Rotary is that clubs, groups, call them what you will, should exist everywhere in a style to suit everyone who has the desire to be part of us and help us fulfill our mission. It's always concerned me 
that so many new members choose to leave Rotary relatively soon after joining. I was staggered to discover that 1.3 million people joined Rotary in the 10 years to July 2019. And yet over the same period, our global membership fell by 20,000. 10% of those who join Rotary leave again in the same year that they join. Now something's wrong somewhere. And with respect, the problem doesn't lie with the new members we lose. It lies with us. We must reduce this turnover. And so the retention of new members through proper engagement, and I stress the word engagement, must be part of the vision for membership going forward. It looks like there's going to be a great base to work from following President Shaker Mehta's Each One Get One initiative this year. But you know, with that initiative, there also comes a great responsibility. And so I look forward to each one keeping one in 2023-24, but I'll need your help to do that. I'm pleased that Rotary has finally formally recognized the importance of diversity, equity and inclusion. And our emphasis on this will do us good and will definitely help us in further promoting Rotary as a place where all can be welcomed and all can feel valued. By attracting a truly diverse membership, we will enhance our presence on the world stage and we will increase our ability to do impactful service projects, which after all is one of the main reasons we exist. Things are getting better with regards to diversity. You don't need me to sit here and tell you that Rotary will welcome its first female president in the shape of Jennifer Jones on the 1st of July. This is well overdue and we're happy to be making progress. But still we see women representing only 24% of Rotary's membership worldwide. And that needs to change. We have more work to do, not only to welcome more women, into Rotary, but every bit as importantly, to welcome other underrepresented voices. Because never forget, diversity is more than simply gender. All minorities matter, and all minorities should be welcome in a Rotary that claims to truly represent its community. To turn to another element of my vision for Rotary, let me say something about our own charity, the Rotary Foundation. If clubs are our bedrock and membership is our lifeblood, then the foundation is the fuel that provides the energy that allows us to carry out our work. As a result of recent developments surrounding polio, together with the demands of the pandemic and the addition of the environment as an area of focus, our reputation, our ability, and the opportunity to serve has grown substantially. And this requires a strong foundation. It saddens me that around two thirds of Rotarians make no personal contribution whatsoever to the Rotary Foundation, especially at times like this, when the demands on it are increasing. Past RI President Ravi Ravindran, a man for whom I have the highest regard, recently tweeted, not everyone has the resource to make a large contribution, but every Rotarian has the ability to make some contribution to our foundation. And I agree, it's simple economics. We cannot take out of the foundation more than we put in. Hence the hard decisions that have had to be taken recently regarding level of funding for things like global grants. So while I'm president, I hope to support the Rotary Foundation, not only to increase overall giving, but also I hope to persuade each Rotarian to contribute something to what is after all their foundation. 
and in doing so, gain true ownership of it. During my 37 years in Rotary, and as Alistair Risk can tell you, I was very young when I joined. I've seen the innovation and the changes that we've made with my own eyes. I've seen what works, and arguably more importantly, I've seen what doesn't work. And I believe that insight is invaluable. One thing I have always believed in, and which will be central to my Rotary vision, is the concept of continuity. I've always been a great advocate of continuity in Rotary, and I've tried to practice that at every level of Rotary leadership, be it club, district, Rotary Great Britain and Ireland, or zone. And I see no reason to change that now. I believe strongly in the concept of Rotary's years, plural, where there's a seamless transition between leaders, rather than the concept of my year, singular, where one individual takes us in one direction, only for other individuals to take us in different directions in subsequent years, before all too often we end up right back where we started, where individuals won't embark on any initiatives that don't complete in their year, because they're worried they won't get the credit for it. I'm not bothered who gets the credit for something, as long as that something is worthwhile and is done properly. Accordingly, I'm already working with President Shaker and President-elect Jennifer, and I look forward to continuing to do so with my successor, whenever he or she is identified, in a true spirit of continuity that sees Rotary move forward on a straight and steady course towards an ever better future. Friends, if I may be so presumptuous as to use that term, I would like to change direction slightly at this point. We spend a lot of time and we expend a lot of energy talking about how Rotary should operate, how we might attract and retain new members how we might form new clubs, how we might increase support for the foundation, how we might achieve continuity. In the time remaining to me, just as I did at your handover last June, I'd also like to say something about the why. I think it's important to do so because I think it's critical that we never lose sight of why Rotary exists. It exists to make the world a better place. It exists to help people live a better life. Well, how do we do that? And that, of course, is not the easiest of questions to answer. But over the last few years, I've been lucky enough to see with my own eyes so many examples of how Rotary makes the world a better place and helps people live a better life. I'm sure all of you have too, but perhaps it's worth reflecting on just a few of those examples. There are AIDS orphans who were living in poverty in Rwanda and elsewhere in Africa through no fault of their own. But these young people are alive today and have a sustainable future because of Rotary. There are people in too many countries who were forced to walk miles each day for water that was both polluted and diseased. These people are drinking clean water today because Rotary installed a water pump in their village. I've sat beside children in a remote village in KwaZulu-Natal province in South Africa, reading school books as the evening light faded. And I've seen the joy on their faces as the solar lights we took along with us provided and came on and lit, gave them light to continue studying. These children are being educated because of Rotary. And these are only three examples 
of countless examples I could give you, where Rotary, where each and every one of you help people live a better life, and in doing so, make the world a better place. What more could we strive for than to make a difference and create a better world, a more caring world, a more loving world than we have just now? And surely it is the creation of a more peaceful world, a more caring world, a more loving world, a kinder world that answers the question, why do we do what we do? As I draw these remarks to a close, and isn't that the best sentence you'll ever hear in a Rotary address, as I draw these remarks to a close, those of you who have heard me speak over the last three months or so will have heard me quote the US Senator, the late Robert Kennedy, who addressing the University of Cape Town in South Africa in June of 1966 said, and I quote, like it or not, we live in interesting times. They are times of danger and uncertainty, but they are also the most creative of any time in the history of mankind. And everyone here will ultimately be judged, will ultimately judge themselves on the effort they have contributed to building a new world society and the extent to which their ideals and goals have shaped that effort." End quote. 56 years on from Kennedy's address, in today's times of danger and uncertainty presented us by the coronavirus pandemic, let us recognize that they are also among the most creative of any time in the history of Rotary. Let us make sure we are judged on the effort we have contributed to building a new Rotary and the extent our combined ideals and goals have shaped that effort as we build forward better. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to meet and to speak with you. Thank you for all you do for Rotary. I wish you every success during the years ahead. We are all embarking on an exciting journey together. And I look forward to walking and to working alongside you. Each and every one of you is a credit to the badge that you wear. And I am proud, very proud, to belong to the same organization as you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Gordon. Thanks for your time and thanks for those uh, inspiring remarks. Um, we've got about 100 people on the call, and it would be great to open this out to discussion and questions. Fantastic to have you here, to have you here as a fellow Scot, and to have you here as the, the incoming uh, president, RI president for 23-24. So great opportunity to put you on the spot. I don't think anybody was looking for you to rush towards the end of your remarks. In fairness there, Gordon, despite, your, uh, despite the levity, I think people were pretty much hooked. You could uh, hear a proverbial zoom pin drop. Um, so I, I assume that's because the remarks were very thought provoking. I have got a few people on the on the call, however. So if people do want to ask Gordon a question or just, you know, make an observation or a comment, can you pop your electronic hand up for me? And I'll just take people in the order um, that they come up. Um, so I have got, um, I can't see on my screen whether it's Martin or Anne, but there's a hand up in the first there household <laughs> who would like uh, to come on and speak to god no it's both of you it's a uh, double whammy <laughs> martin, with, martin with the question heather and gordon Go for it, martin <laughs> the impression over the pandemic that rotary clubs have started looking more inwardly at their own local communities and less so internationally gordon do you see this as good bad an opportunity or whatever. 
Well, it's a very good question, Martin. And I think you're absolutely, first of all, you're absolutely right. I think by by dint of the fact that it's been very difficult to, to, to do things on an international basis, uh, a lot of clubs have started doing things on a more local basis. And I don't think that's a bad thing because I think what a lot of clubs have been doing is they've been doing service locally rather than fundraising locally. And, and I know from the example of the South Queensferry Club uh, that because they have been getting down and dirty in the town again for the first time in a long time, they've actually raised the profile of the club in the town. Uh, they've improved various things in the town, but they have also raised the profile of the, the, the club and as a consequence have attracted new members. And uh, that can only be a good thing. And I think that's a good example uh, of how if we can be doing service locally, then we can help increase our membership. And, you know, everybody, it's easy to, to, to say, oh, it's all about membership and all we want to do is get more and more members. But of course, it's not just about getting the numbers. It's about getting people there with, for every member, you get two hands willing to do the service. And I think as we come out of the pandemic, and we will come out of the pandemic, you know, the, the, we're, we're beginning to see light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, as we come out of the pandemic, we'll move back into the international field as well, because that's one of the, the great opportunities of being involved with Rotary, Rotary in a, a place like Scotland. We can look abroad and, and do service and, and contribute to things overseas as well. But uh, first of all, I think you're absolutely right in your observation. I think clubs have become more inward looking. At the moment, I don't think that's a bad thing because it's allowed them to raise their profile. But I also hope that in the fullness of time, they will move out again and be looking to support projects overseas because they need our help. Thanks for the question, uh, Martin. And nice to see you and in, in Anne. And thanks for the response, Gordon. I've now got Malcolm Rooney from Kerry Muir with a question. Thanks. Thanks, Heather. Hi, Gordon. Nice to meet you on the screen. And uh, welcome. I wear, as you know, an environmental hat. And in that context, it seems to me that real change in terms of the environment and sustainability has to happen at political level. How do we engage with and influence our political leaders without Rotary being perceived to be political? Well, uh, you're absolutely right. And, and first of all, it's nice, nice to see your face having corresponded with you in the last <laughs> couple of days by email. But um, you, you, you're absolutely right. Rotary is not going to solve the issue of climate change. Rotary is not going to be the, 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 the panacea that will completely turn things around from an environment point of view. But just as we did with the, the polio eradication campaign, we can be great advocates and we can be great ambassadors for the environment. But on a, on a, a lesser level, we can also carry out a lot of great environmental projects that, that, that can be done that in their own small way will contribute to an improvement in things. You know, we, we, we can get out there and we can clean up our river banks, we can clean up our beaches, we can show good practice ourselves in, in what we do in terms of how we live our own lives with recycling and, and, and all that sort of thing. And, and all these things will contribute to improving the environment. One thing that we, we are doing and that you're going to hear a lot more about uh, as a consequence of President Shaker's time at COP26 in Glasgow in November is that uh, we're getting involved in mangrove planting. Uh, mangrove swamps were being lost uh, and, and mangroves are a great way to uh, capture carbon. And uh, we're getting involved at the moment with a lot of mangrove planting projects around the world and you'll probably hear more about that and see more about that in the Rotary publications in the months ahead but um, so so you know again you're absolutely right that we we, we cannot solve all the problems um, but we we can be non-political and yet advocate for doing the right thing um, just as we have advocated for 30 years on the polio eradication front and have engaged with governments that way. And because governments are listening to us uh, over polio, they will listen to us um, over other things. Whether they will 
then take what we are saying and, and put it into practice, that becomes a moot point. We'd maybe need to hold a maybe need to hold a garden party with governments and take our own drink along and see whether or not that was uh, whether it be resonant. Yeah, thank you. The the last call that we had in this forum uh, was on the planting of mangrove trees and the treacly project. And yep. there's a note coming out in the next 10 10 vision on blue carbon. So just uh, thanks very much for your answer. Great. No, thank you. Yep, thanks, Malcolm, and thanks, Gordon. I see Linda has, has put something in the chat as well about the the Treakley app, the Treakley challenge. I don't know if you've picked up on that, uh, Gordon, if you've heard yep. about that. And yep. uh, that's what Malcolm was referring to. Um, so great way to, to link people's health and well-being uh, into the new year with uh, planting mangroves for all the reasons that you yep. that you say uh, incredibly, incredibly important. So it was a good reminder that there's more information um, around for that as well. Uh, Malcolm, yeah, I was I was struck by um, the passion that was coming across there, and obviously the strength of your views, understandably so, Gordon, about foundation, and almost kind of re-energising our our commitment, you know, um, as Rotarians individually and collectively to foundation and the importance of that. Do you want to say a little bit more about that? Because obviously we get so potted when you're trying to cover all of that ground, but I think yeah. you had you had a real kind of um, something that was a real key part of your vision there well well it is and you know I, the foundation is just such a fundamental part of of what rotary is all about and, and i think one of the problems in, in this part of the world in particular it, it's a largely misunderstood part of rotary as well and and that's you know it's nobody's fault but people like myself and and and, and others um, but but the fact is that you know the foundation can achieve and does achieve so much, but it but it could achieve so much more if it was better supported. And uh, you know it's it's one of those things that I, I've had conversations with members of of my own club. Uh, you know when we're out running events in aid of foundation or having collections in aid of foundation. Now. If you're going out to ask the public to put their hand in their pocket and give you money for foundation, then surely you should be supporting it yourself. Because otherwise, how can you justifiably take money off somebody in the street? If they were to ask you the question, yeah, is this a charity? You know, are you putting money into this? Now you could say, well, I'm putting something into it by standing here and giving my time to, to collect. And, and that's okay. But you know, in other parts of the world, I think foundation is better understood. One of the other things that I think it has to be said, we have been very guilty of here, and this is where I come back to what I was saying about clubs getting back to the, the concept of service during the pandemic. But one of the things I think we've been very guilty of in this country is that we're very good at raising money for other people. You know, clubs will raise money for guide dogs for the blind. They'll raise money for the British Heart Foundation. They'll raise money for Oxfam. Now, all these things are very worthy causes. Don't get me wrong. But the fact is, the Rotary Foundation is our foundation. It's our charity. And it has been proven over the years that compared to many of the world's charities, it's such a well-run and a well-stewarded charity that uh, if we put a pound into the foundation, we know that a pound will get spent on the projects. If you put a pound, and I hope there's nobody here either works for Oxfam or, or has a direct connection with Oxfam, but if you put a pound into the box for Oxfam, you'll be lucky if 30 or 40 pence ends up at the sharp end. So for me, and when I'm speaking elsewhere, I always use the fact that I am a Scot and I like a good bang for my buck. But, you know, uh, for me, it makes sense to put money in the direction of the foundation rather than into other charities. It, it's pure and simple. And, and there are so many needs being asked, you know, placed on it, as I said, because we've now got the environment, because we're at the, the almost at the end of polio, because we've got the pandemic, all these things that, that we need to have more funds to then disperse in the fullness of time. Thanks, Gordon. And we have been chatting about that um, a lot in the district for all of the reasons um, that you are, that you're talking about. And uh, Seamlessly, my I think my most recent um, discussion um, or email exchange was with uh, Tony Janetta, who has his hand up. So I don't want to 
preempt what he might be about to say, but I suspect it might be a connected point, Tony, is it? Uh, I think you're right there. Um, Gordon, <laughs> Gordon and I have talked about this as well and things that go on at RIBI, and you're going to see a few changes there to create a bit more awareness. And I think it's down to us to, um, I'm not going to say educate or re-educate the way it's considered, because in many cases here, it's believed that the club supports the foundation as opposed to us each as individual Rotarians. And one of the ways we're going to try and do more in the district is to talk more about legacy giving and how we can all do a little something, um, as we heard. So we're working at the foundation level in the district to do a bit more, uh, hopefully to be invited out or to ask if we can come out and talk more about the foundation and the understanding and especially about things like legacy given. So thank you. No, thank you, Tony. I know you're a great advocate for the foundation given your previous history. And, uh, but, but, but we, need, we need people like you, I have to say that will go out and you, you can you can talk from a, a, a point of knowledge and, and also a point of commitment that you've already made yourself. So thank you for all you have done. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And you are a great champion of uh, foundation, member of the Arts Comp Society and things, Tony. I mean, you do a huge amount. So thanks and thanks for all that you're doing to support us, promoting uh, and building on our successes and contributions to foundation. And the district much appreciated. So. Um, oh, God, you're not off the hook yet. So we've got um, Ian Kerr from the E-Club of Aviation. Over to you, Ian. Oh, you're on mute, Ian. Gordon's got many skills, you'd, but I don't know if he's going to be able to guess the question. <laughs> you'd, you'd think as a Zoom club, I would have got that sorted out. But, uh, <laughs> um, an an E-Club. No, I, I, all I was going to say is I'm going to blow our trumpet because we previously... Um, and possibly this year again will win an award for the highest per capita giving. It's quite simple. Our club members give two hundred dollars each per year to Rotary. We don't we don't we don't run other fundraisers. It's it's all generated by the individual members. And that that breaks down to four dollars a week. Yeah, which at, the, which at the moment probably less than the price of a cup of coffee a week. Actually, in the in the UK, it's ten pounds a month. Yep. If you take yep. £10 a month is £120, uh, add on gift aid, uh, convert it to dollars, and you've got as near as damn it is to swearing $200. Yep. 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 Thanks, Ian. Certainly one way of going about it. Absolutely. Uh, Kath, you wanted to come in? Yes. Thank, thanks very much, Heather. Thank you very much, Gordon. As ever, that was excellent and very interesting. I was particularly interested in what you said about your club, South Queen's Ferry, being out and about in the community. And uh, I guess that my club, Forth Bridges, could wave across the, the Forth to you. Um, and we have the same experience as you. Our president is on here, and I don't know if she'll chip in, but um, we've been out a lot in the community, particularly our president, uh, Vicky, uh, because I think, you know, Gordon, we run a clothing bank for mm -hmm. uh, for children um, and that has created tremendous interest in the community and that and other things um, has caused us to be able to increase our uh, membership by six so far this year and I guess it will be a lot more. Um, how can we encourage everybody to be in the community but most importantly doing things that people are interested in doing. So we won't attract, you know, there's a lot of things we can do, but people can do that on their own. What is the unique selling point with Rotary where we can work together in the community so that people say, I want to be part of this? Well, I mean, I think, I think the unique selling point is the fact that they can be doing it together with a group of friends. Now, I know you could say, well, you can have a group of friends getting together, doing other things as well. Because once people are involved with Rotary, they realise that the other benefits that come from being part of Rotary, simple things like the fact that you've got the security of insurance when you're doing things, that's important. 
But I think the other thing to bear in mind when you get, get involved with Rotary is the fact that, especially having said that it's not all about young people, but for young people who are getting involved with Rotary, it's that personal development opportunity that can come to people. Uh, and I know, you know, I joined Rotary when I was 26. And, uh, you know, I openly admit that, that you know, the, the personal development that Rotary has given me I will never ever be able to pay back. I learned things through Rotary that I would never have learned or I certainly did not learn at dental school. And the, the benefits that it has given me and my wife Heather and our family over the years, the, the things that come back out of Rotary, you, you know, you get so much more back from Rotary than you'll ever be able to put in yourself. But, but I think one of the things, the attraction for getting people together is the fact that you're bringing people together in a cohesive manner and uh, and there is that visibility and that you know we do have this brand that stands for something and uh, I do believe that the public understand Rotary a bit better now than they used to I think they could understand it a whole lot better still but if you go back a few years I, I, I think perception is improving uh, and that is because they're out, you know they're seeing clubs out doing things. And, and the whole thing feeds itself. As you say, you've been out doing things on the north side of the fourth, and that's attracted members. There's a club on the south side of the fourth, that's attracted members. And, and that what we need to do is get that message out to the other clubs that maybe aren't doing as much, that that's the way to actually achieve things. And I remember, I think it was at your handover, that there was a wonderful video of the children's food bank, um, clothes bank that you run on uh, the north side there. And that's a fantastic project. And, and the way that had grown like topsy from, from the initial starting point, it's a wonderful example of, you know, rotary in action, rotary doing things, not just talking about doing things, actually getting out there and doing things. Yeah, and I, I think that also connects as well, doesn't it, to the point that you were making, Gordon, about capitalising on that um, increased sense of neighbourhood, community, um, the value of service, you know, the, the, the sense of achievement that, and, and, and worth and civic pride that comes with service yeah. that, you know, has been quite new to people because of the way that they've got involved through the pandemic. So getting out there, making connections with yeah. those people as well as potential new Rotarians, really important. Yeah, thanks, Cass, and thanks for that, Gordon. Uh, Mike, you've got your hand up. Yeah, uh, thanks, Heather. Um, good evening, Gordon. And uh, I think you, you've actually um answered some of the questions that i i had anyway but i will make the, the point um one of the a few a couple of months ago within kiri muir we had a comment from somebody about why would they join an organization where they've got to pay to join an organization when they can volunteer and do something within their local community just you know that's what, what they want to do and they could just volunteer, do what they want to do, and then move away from it. And also, you know, we talk about, you know, you pay our fees, et cetera, whether that's district or RIBI. And then we talk about, well, you contributing to foundation. So that's another add on. So, you know, there's, it's all this link about Rotarians paying into the organization. And if we're trying to encourage people with, you know, diversity, and, and encouraging sort of a broader church, if you use that term, to join. I sometimes have that worry that we're, we're almost making it a little bit too elitist, which is one of the things that has been, I think, a criticism of Rotary in the past. Um, but a lot of the things you answered, you know, in terms of insurances, making it, you, you, you touched on it anyway, but I thought I'd make the point. Yeah, no, and, and, and you make a very good point, Mike. And I think one of the problems is in the past, and, and by past, I mean going back, you know, 25, maybe even 30 more years back, um, you know, Rotary did probably see itself as a bit elitist. And it was all the great and the good of a town that would be in the Rotary Club and they would all disappear into the, the best hotel in the town at lunchtime and fall out again about four o'clock in the afternoon and distribute their largesse around the town. Things have changed. You know, life has changed and Rotary has changed. 
but it still needs to change further. Uh, and as I say, you, you, you know, I probably have answered your question when it comes to why would you pay for, for the opportunity to go out and give service? Well, of course, it's what you get back as well. And, and it's the network that you're buying into uh, and the opportunities that you're getting because of that. Um, but, but, you know, that, that's why we have to make, come back to what I said earlier about different styles of club to suit what different people want, how different people want to do things. Um, there are some people who probably would still quite enjoy going along with their shirt and tie on at a lunchtime and uh, having, having lunch and, and doing good in the town. That's fine. But don't deny those other people the opportunity to do it. They don't want to do it that way. They want to meet for a bacon roll and a cup of coffee on a Saturday morning and then get their sleeves rolled up and go and paint the park benches or, or go and tidy up the, the local community garden or something like that. So it's, it's having that broad church of opportunities for people so that they can come in and they can do it the way that they want to do it. Yeah, I, I totally agree, Gordon. And I, I'm, we certainly have made some of those changes and we've got, we've started our own uh, clothing bank in Kirimur. I have to say it's not as successful at the moment. It's not got to the same level that, that uh, Kath was talking about for her club, but we have um, great hopes for that for the future yeah. because we see that as showing that we are giving back service to the to the or to the community so uh, we hope that continues the strength really mm -hmm. yeah yeah and Thanks, at the same Gordon. time you're Thanks, you're me. also raising awareness of the club in Kerry mm -hmm. so it's a win-win yeah and, and as your point as well Gordon is about you know having the kind of choice of the different types of rotary the different Rotarians want, but also that, that those who have not yet become Rotarians would be interested mm -hmm. in joining. And the thing that connects that together is the going out, being out in the community, you know, being involved in, in um, activities. But I was also struck by your point about the sort of the traditional approach of kind of the whole large S. I think the other thing that's shifted is, you know, doing things which are relevant, you know, to communities, but not doing those things to communities, you know, doing those things with and for communities is also I think one of the fundamental shifts and often the people who are the Rotarians who are saying you know why don't we just join Probus that usually is coming from people who are in a Rotary club where it is mainly focused on the speakers whereas actually yeah. Rotary can be about so much more and that is definitely much more than you would get elsewhere so yeah absolutely thank yeah, you absolutely I recognize um, the gentleman uh -huh. who's got his hand up next yeah John I think he's got his hand up. Is that right? Here he comes. And he's on mute. He's on mute. Yeah, enjoy the peace and quiet. Come on, John, unmute yourself. <laughs> Greetings. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? Still as mad as ever. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that at our club, uh, because of the pandemic, uh, we actually feel as if it's been one of the best things that's happened because we actually have been able to raise a higher profile in, in our area. We've actually had an opportunity to, to do a local needs analysis and start working with some deprived areas in the, the town itself. Uh, not actually raising funds, but acting as a conduit to open up a community garden, get the community to open up their own committees, etc. So we have actually feel it's been a great benefit for that. Um, and I, I, I just hope that through this pandemic that not just our club, but other clubs, not just in our district, but the rest of our IBI, will feel that they've had a benefit from that. It's a positive thing that's come out of it, just as you said earlier on, Gordon, it's been a very positive thing. Well, well, I think you're absolutely right, John. It has given us that chance just to, you know, initially to pause and just think of it before we then moved forward. And that's what I mean when I say it would be a real tragedy and a travesty if we don't learn from it. I mean, the, the thing that really upsets me at the moment is when I hear people saying, oh, it'll be just nice to get back to the way things were. Well, for me, that would be an absolute waste of the last two years if things just went back to the way things were, because how were things before? Things weren't too good. We were losing members, we were getting older, we were da-da-da, whereas now we've had this chance, as you say, your club's done a needs analysis, so you now know I've got a better handle on what's needed in the area rather than you going out telling them what you're going to give them uh, and, and as a consequence the club is in a better place because of that 
and we've had a, a, a success rate of, of, of actually getting five new members. Unbelievable. We didn't think that would happen. But we've mm -hmm. actually got members joining us. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's positive as well. So I, I think that's, there's a lot to come through from that. Yeah, it does work, doesn't it? All of the oh, things yes. that we're talking about, it does work. Um, and our job in the district team is to, is to support clubs to take forward those initiatives and doing, you know, working on doing things differently and, and trying new things in the way that we're talking about for all of the benefits that we're that we're identifying. You and put a note in the chat as well that a couple of things we've been trying to do practically is, is not charge district fees last year and this year to recognise the financial pressures um, and allow those, those resources to go into trying new things and reinvesting in projects and also making some funds specifically available for public image and membership development initiatives, as, as Gordon said, to try and take the opportunities that are coming out of the difficult situation that's come um, through through COVID. Well, look, I'm, I'm conscious of time, so I won't um, get us into another question in case it's um, an equally interesting one and we'll be here uh, we'll be here a lot longer than I promised that we would be. Um, however, um, if you can join me um, in thanking Gordon for coming along, great to have you here as ever. Uh, Gordon, um, I'm sure we'll see you again in, in lots of different forms, but certainly all the very best for what will be an increasingly busy and demanding uh, time uh, for you. But um, thank you very much you. Um, for coming along and speaking to us tonight. Really, really great. Um, thank you very much. It's been, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. And, and just in closing, folks, um, I don't know if um, if you noticed that we had um, Janine Burtwistle nips on the call, um, which comes and joins in a lot of the district team. She leads for Road to Great Britain and Ireland on Empowering Girls. And I said that I would um, make you guys aware while you were on the call of a, a seminar, an online seminar, which is happening on Saturday, the 5th of February, um, on the theme of uh, Empowering Girls. Um, as we know, that's, that's a much wider a topic you know it's very much about uh, ideas success stories not just girls also boys and indeed just about generally giving service of a, uh, a voice and the confidence for young people to really make their lives better and to help make other lives better in the way that we've just been talking about tonight so please do um, think about coming along to that seminar and promoting that within your own club um, and that leaves me with nothing else to do Except thank you again, Gordon. Thank everybody for coming along tonight to this DG drop in. Um, all the best, everybody. See you soon. Thanks again. Bye bye. Thank you. All, the, all the best. All Good the best for being. All, all the best for your RI presidency. Thank, thank you. you. Absolutely. Here, here.